Earlier this year, a man paralyzed from the neck down due to a spinal cord injury he sustained in 2007 has shown that he can communicate for the first time thanks to a brain implant system that translates his imagined handwriting into actual text with 94% accuracy. Today, we're looking at brain computer interfaces and how they might change the future. Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Miles. Welcome to Spin Up Science, where we look at how scientific discoveries are being turned into the next generation of innovations and technologies. Brain computer interfaces, as the name suggests, are interfaces between a brain and a computer. They can read electrical signals in the brain and communicate those signals via an algorithm into actions in a computer. Could be moving a cursor, typing, or searching for cat pictures. Recently, researcher Frank Willett and his team from Stanford University have demonstrated a faster way to use these BCIs for writing that should allow those that have been paralyzed to communicate more efficiently. In a trial study, the team recruited a volunteer who had been previously paralyzed from the neck down by a spinal cord injury. By asking the volunteer to imagine writing with a pen, embedded sensors in the volunteer's brain observed the electrical activity that the brain produced and after the system learned to reliably recognize which letter they were imagining could type words on a computer at a rate of 90 characters per minute, roughly the speed of someone typing on a smartphone. Similar systems to this have been around for a while and have allowed volunteers to do things like controlling a robotic limb, performing extremely dexterous tasks like picking and placing objects. To understand though exactly how these systems work, let's dig a little bit deeper. Brain computer interfaces don't directly translate electrical functions into action. What I always imagined when I dreamed of synthetic limbs or cybernetic implants was technology that directly translated the signal moving down an individual neuron in the brain and converted it one-to-one -one into an electrical impulse in a synthetic muscle or something similar. It is possible to read the voltage discharge of an individual neuron in the lab, but in practice, finding the right neuron in the brain or in the spinal cord would be incredibly difficult. Similarly, these systems aren't command-based. They don't translate your inner voice into an action. It turns out there's a much easier way of doing this whole process. As a generalized idea, a brain-computer interface has three conceptual layers to it. A hardware layer, a machine learning layer, and an application or a software layer. The hardware layer is the physical interface that sits on or close to the brain and is capable of measuring electrical activity, similar to an EEG cap that you might wear as part of a medical procedure. Often multiple sensors are used to take measurements at different positions of the brain and each sensor, rather than measuring an individual neuron, measures an area of activity because all complex tasks in the brain require a sea of neurons cooperating together. How they cooperate depends on the task that is actually being performed. For example, writing the letter A rather than the letter B will generate subtly different signals, not just in the intensity of the electrical peak, but also in the shape, the duration, and the location of that activity. The collected signals from this hardware layer are fed either through wires or wirelessly into something called a neural network, which is a type of machine learning approach, so named as it works similarly to how your brain recognizes patterns. This neural network or machine learning algorithm runs on a computer and learns which patterns correspond to which letters. To make this work, you actually need to train the system to recognize the correct letter. You would train the system by capturing the brain activity from repeated attempts at trying to draw a particular letter. This would build up essentially a catalog of brain activity, all of which should correspond to the intent of trying to draw something like the letter A. Although all activity will look broadly very similar between any two letters, with a sufficient volume of data, the algorithm can learn the distinctive characteristics of that brain signal that's generated when writing a particular letter that make it unique. This process, this pattern recognition, is what your brain is naturally very good at doing. An example will be looking at faces. Faces have some very distinctive characteristics like eyes, ears, mouth, nose. This pattern recognition system for faces is highly tuned in human beings because understanding facial expressions and nonverbal communication is so important to us as a species. Most people can notice the subtle difference in facial geometry between a person that is happy as opposed to someone that is surprised. This proclivity for pattern recognition of faces is ultimately why people spot spiritual figures in pieces of toast. All that to say the machine learning layer, this neural network, is where the magic really happens. The rest is simply electrical inputs and electrical outputs. 
the output of the machine learning layer looking at a brain signal sends a code to the application or the software layer that types a corresponding letter based on the brain signal measured and decoded. As I mentioned, these systems have been around for a while, but this most recent breakthrough was in the cerebral metaphor focused on to translate this brain to text system. Previous methods, rather than asking a volunteer to imagine handwriting a letter, asks them instead to imagine moving a cursor up and down on a screen. The system would let them pick out letter by letter, one by one, by moving the cursor towards the letter that they wanted to type. Although this system did work, it was less than half the speed, maxing out at about 40 characters per minute, which ultimately became very frustrating to the users. This ability to decode differences in imagined handwriting represents the cutting edge of distinguishing between subtle differences in brain activity. And although the work shows great promise, it is still in early stages of development, and it would need to go through things like clinical trials before becoming available on a wider scale, particularly as this level of high accuracy device probably needs to be implanted directly into or onto the brain. But we already have BCIs that work outside of the skull and still do some fun things, though they'll always be hampered by the fact that they sit above a layer of facial muscles, which also create electrical signals when activated, so make subtler signals hard, if not impossible, to decipher. James Brutton recently released a video where he takes an off-the-shelf BCI and explores how his movements and his concentration levels map to different levels of measured brain signal activity, maybe with a view to reprogramming it to triggering his Wolverine claws. While on the topic of limbs, although capturing brain activity at the brain is really important in cases of full body paralysis, for those that have experienced limb amputation, the brain's signals can be tapped into much closer to the intended end point. Multiple prosthetics companies detect muscle signal activity and translate it into action of the prosthetic limb, allowing users to open, close, and rotate the hand. Here, the limb is controlled using the same signals as a biological hand, so learning times should be comparative relatively sure. Combining these with sensors on the fingertips and haptic feedback to the user could mean that the user could feel how much force they were applying in holding an object. While some of these technologies are further along than others, hacking the brain or the signals it sends around the body can offer radical improvements in the mobility, independence, and quality of life, and also one day allow us to control our own Wolverine claws. If you like this video, leave a like or a comment below, subscribe to keep up with cutting edge technologies leaving the lab, Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.